going to do a recap of Dan okay. And in the course of that, um, like we wrap everything up. Um, unfortunately, we would need to abandon the other work we were doing with the Geo server. I think the fully on thing that we are trying to do uh, pretty much covers most of the things you need to know as far as geospatial work is concerned. Um, the reason why I am abandoning that is, well, because of the complexity of some of the things, I realize most of you are getting along with the folio. So we are going to abandon that. But then the main idea is when you don't have something already made up for you like folio, how you can create your own map and put it on a web server and then. Then the second reason why I am abandoning that is also because of um, some challenges I'm having with the codes. Normally what I do is I try and implement it uh, from my end, do a lot of debugging and know what works and what does not work. Then before I try and um, facilitate, but it, the codes I'm using or the ones I've written are not working out for me. So today what I'm going to do is we are basically going to do a recap of the folio. Then we are going to look at an instance where you put the folio in a Django application, okay? So remember, whatever you were doing or whatever we were trying to do was just trying to see how we can render maps and things like that. But beyond that, how do we have it application, which can be on the web server where somebody can have access to some map data. And that's basically what we wanted to achieve. So we'll finish up with that today. Then um, the rest of the days, I think we'll go for you. Um, we are going to break after today, so maybe Thursday. Then on Thursday, you already know the groups in which you are Then I mean, we all sit down and do the presentation nicely. All right, so like I've seen, this is just um, a folder I created, a uh, map work, a new folder, and we are just going to create, um, let's say, a map.py file. So like we've already been doing, we can do um, import. We, we, we are just going to run import folio. All right. So after importing folio, what we can do is to create a map, which we do that. There's a variable M, and inside that variable, we want to do folio dot map now if we do it just like this yes it's going to work for us okay but sometimes you'd want to specify some things in here which we saw the other time but for now let's leave it like this then we can do m which is our dot save so m is now the map object okay everything is being saved over here now we have these three lines of codes and after saving we need to run it okay so there are two ways of running it. We can either run it by clicking this run button over here, or we can open over here. So when, when, when we open the terminal window, what we can do is to do Python. Then we call the name of the app, which is map.py, map.py. And when we click enter, as we've all done before, it's going to, um, it says, we have a problem. Okay, so, and this makes um, a lot of sense. We need to pass in the name in which we want to save the file to, okay? So it says, it is missing one positional argument, okay? Which is inside this particular um, error it is calling. So we need to pass in the name of the HTML file we want to see over here. So we can pass in the name as .html. Now we save it, control S, we save, and we run Python map.py again. And with this one, you're not going to get any error. So what you're going to see is, we are going to see the map.ecml file over here. Now when you click on this, and we can actually, this, okay, so I'm going to open up in live server, and I'm going to share that screen with you. So this is it, okay, this is the map.
with just three lines of codes, we have that map. We can zoom in and do the things we we're doing the last time. All right. So this is basically the map. And um, I mean, they are just three lines of codes. Okay, we didn't add so much things over here. Okay, what we could have done was also to add the location, the zoom start, and things like that. So in order to add a location and perhaps maybe a location that we know very well, let's go and, go and pick some coordinates. So we can go to um, geojson.io. Remember, we used this particular um, place a lot. So we can zoom in and let's say a location which is going to be our starting location somewhere in the University of Ghana. Um, so we are in, there's somewhere at Kramadina, let's zoom in. So I think the University of Ghana is, is a, the first University of Ghana. So this is the University of Ghana. And I think, okay, okay. so College of Engineering. So you can pick a marker and place it here. And these are the coordinates that are going to be generated. All that we need is this, okay? So you copy this, then you go into our code. When you go into our code, you are just going to type in location. So location, and it's going to be a list. We are going to do this. Now, if you remember where we were, what we did the last time was, um, normally, this is a latitude, okay? It is a longitude, and it's supposed to come before the latitude. So we just copy this in front of this. All right. So when we do this, our map is going to start from this particular location. Then we can also specify the zoom start, zoom underscore start. Then let's give a zoom start of, let's say, seven. All right. So when you do this, our map is going to be um, a little bit different from what we know. So after saving it, we need to run this map.pile. So after running it, we can go back into a uh, map. Uh, we don't need this anymore. And you can see that we are centered around Ghana. Okay. One other thing that we also learned was to add markers to it. So we can actually add a marker and uh, I mean, it's very simple. We just do folium marker. Then we specify the location where we want the marker. So the location, once again, let's copy this location. We want the marker to be at this location. So I'll just grab this, control C, and I'll put it here. All right. So we can just do this. Then we do add to. Then the name of the map. We want to add this marker to the name of this map, which the name is M. So after saving this, we can run the file again. And we are going to see a marker in our map. Okay, so there's a marker. So this is basically what we did. And when we zoom in, we are actually going to see that. It's going to be in the um, School of Engineering um, at the University of Ghana, where you before school. Okay, so basically this is what we did, and we saw the other things we could do, um, adding circles to it, and I mean, I mean a whole lot of other things. I'm not going to spend so much time over here because we've already worked with this, okay, quite extensively. Now, like I said, we are going to see how we are going to incorporate this into a web application, a Django application, okay? So that, um, like, it will, it will, it will bring um, the pieces of the things we are looking at, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, open a new uh, window over here. I'm going to share that screen with you very soon. All right. Okay, so this is a new 
Just close this one. Okay, so this is a new window. And what we want to do is we want to create a Django application. So um, if you still remember what we did, you want to create a Django application. We've already installed Django. We are like we already have Django installed, so we are not going to do the pip install Django again. Okay, once we have it installed, we have it. We can actually look at the thing also. We can do pip list. And when we do pip list, it's going to list all the things we've installed, which I showed you the last time. So as you can see, I have a lot of things installed over here. You are not going to see all these things in your environment because you need to install them. So for instance, we have uh, I have um, I mean, a lot of things, but yeah, so you can see I have Django right here. I have Django crispy forms. It's something um, I think I missed out. I should have showed you how we, I mean, we work around it, but then maybe if we have time, maybe later. Then we also have um, the Django filter and things like that. Then you can see we have Folium over here. So that means we can still be using Folium and things like that. And we have pandas. Uh, we worked with pandas in the past. Then a whole number of things. Okay. So we already have Django. So what we can do is to create a Django application or a Django project. I must say. So we are going to write, run the command Django admin. And there's a hyphen between Django and admin. Then you give a space. Then you type start projects. Then the name of the project, okay. So let's call this project Geospatial Geospatial Okay. So we are going to see that a file, uh, a project or a Django application is going to be created with the name Geospatial Projects. And when you click on enter, um, it says, um, this is Django admin is not there's a typo Django ah, okay 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 so the spelling of Django was wrong okay so Pure Django. Shank, shank. Django yeah in fact that's very good in fact she's 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 helping me out it's supposed to be Django and not Django. All right. So you press enter and we don't have any error. Okay. So what we can do is to bring that particular project into our environment right here. So what we do is we are going to open the folder. Then we can do, like, we can just search for, okay, so this uh, special projects. Okay. The one we just created. We just click on it. And we are going to have it here. All right, so we have this project over here. So these are basically the beginnings of uh, whatever we did. And inside the project, we still have our settings.py, which we are going to do some settings configuration, we have our URLs and things like that, okay. Now, what we are going to do is we need to create the app. And like I said, the app is within the, uh, the project, okay. Multiple apps and it can be running them in a particular project. So what we are going to do is we are going to do Python manage.py, then we do start app and the name of the app. So we are going to call the app site map. And before you press enter, you see that we already have, or we only have the project folder over here. When we run this um, command, you are going to see that the sitemap application is going to be created over here. So I'll click on enter and just look over here. You see the sitemap over here. And these are the um, things we've already been working with. I mean, the main purpose of this is to how to see how we can incorporate the folio map into a Django application, which is going to be a full-blown website kind of a thing. All right. So the first thing we normally do, or I normally encourage, is to do some configurations over here. But before we do that, let's create. We have 
on templates. So let's create a template folder. So we do templates. Okay. No, no, this is supposed to be a folder. So you click on this new folder. Then it's supposed to be templates. All right. So you have templates folder over here. Now, go into our project folder. We go to settings.py. The first thing we are going to do is to register our app. Okay, we need to tell Django that we've created a new app and like we have it in installed apps. We are going to do, um, and the name of the app is sitemap. So sitemap dot apps. Okay, and the apps ends with an S dot apps dot sitemap with a capital S um, config with a capital C, okay? One of the simple things I do when I'm doing this is just to write site, I mean, the name of the map, uh, the app, dot apps. Then I'll normally go into the apps folder and go to this particular apps.py. Then I just come and copy that I minimize the mistakes I do because this is a site map.config, okay? We need to register it in our settings. Then what I do is I just come and paste it here. All right, so we are going to go. Then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to specify um, the template um, path. So we are going to do, and like I the other time we're doing, or we're using OS, okay? And this is where the OS comes in. This has automatically been imported for us, so we need not to do anything. So what we can do is say, inside our templates, we need to join this particular folder to it so that Django will know that we are dealing with some templates in there. So we do os dot, dot join. And the question is what do we want to join? We want to join our base directory to a folder called templates so that Django will know that there's a folder called template in here, which we are going to put in templates. All right, so you can save this. And this is about now, the things we are going to do. We are not going to work with databases for now. It's just a simple illustration of how we can join these two things. All right, so we already have this done. So we are done with settings.py. And we'll go to urls.py, and we are going to tell Django that we have a new application, so it should handle it for us. So what I normally do, which I showed you the last time, is to just copy this. Then you add include over here. So there's a function include. Then we we'll bring this one down and we want this to be our root app or the pattern. Then we just do the name of the, um, the application is site map. Okay. We just add the name of the application. Remember, there's an admin app. And I showed you the admin app. That's where we have the the, the Django admin site where we can add things into our database and things like that. So we already have, I mean, we've done this. The next thing we are going to do, I'm going to close this. So we are done with the settings in the project application. The next thing we are going to do is to create inside our site map, we are going to create a urls.py file. And remember the relationship between our views and our urls, okay? They go hand in hand. So the first thing we are going to do is to create some views over here and the views are functions. These are going to implement the logic that you want to implement. So later on, we are going to, we are going to add the folio map over here. The first thing I'm going to do like we did the last time was to say from django.http, we are going to import HTTP response. All right. Then the first thing we are going to do, we're actually going to create two functions or two views actually an index okay which is going to take in a request then we are just going to return an http response we've already done this that's why i'm moving very fast this is the index page all right first function we've created and the next function We are going to create the next function as map. A request. 
and you are going to return an HTTP response. And inside it, you are just going to type in this is the map page. All right. So once we've created these views, we need to tell the URLs how to. So we are going to say from Django dot URLs. We want to import the first thing we need to import is path. Then we say from the current folder we need to import views so that we can link the two up. Then you are going to do URL URL path. And it's going to be a list. So remember with the list, we use the square brackets. All right. So the first thing we are going to do is path and we specify the path. So text, we leave it like this so that it knows that things are root um, a path. Then we are going to call views.index. View.index. Then we are going to give it a name of index. Then we we'll create another path for the um, the map. So we we'll do map forward slash. Then we we'll do view dot map. Then we we'll give it a name of map. All right. I know I'm moving very fast, but this is basically what I wanted. Okay. So this is the map. Okay. So. We don't have any problems over here. I think so. Now we can run this and after running, we just type in Python manage, manage.py run server. So when we do this, um, I hope we are not going to get any error. Okay, we don't have any error. So we can do control and we click on this. And when we do that, we can see, excuse me, I'm coming on. Uh, excuse me, just a minute at the time. Okay, sorry, sorry. I need to do something over right here. Like I'm already running an app which is taking that particular port. Okay. Okay, so when we come into a browser, we are going to see this is the index page. Okay, and when we slash map. It's going to take us to this is the map page okay so you can see that everything is working over here all right so we'll go back once again to the basics okay now we don't just want to be rendering um let me close this one now we don't just want to be rendering the response okay we want to render templates so inside the template folder i'm going to create another folder which is going to be a sub folder which we are calling partials. I basically want to implement all the things we've done, the pieces of everything. So all that we are trying to do is we want to do template inheritance and things like that. Then we are going to do a base dot So this is going to be a base dot html. Then we come into our template folder once again. Then we are going to create two folders or two files. The first one is going to be index dot html. Then the next one. We are going to create is going to be map.html map.html all right so instead of just rendering index um under the column um these http response we want to render things from the map um, templates so in order to do that um i'll quickly go to bootstrap so that i go and grab some bootstrap um, the starter templates. Okay, so you can do get bootstrap.com. Then get started. We are just going to grab this starter templates we've already used before. So we call, then we come back into our projects. Then we paste it in here. 
All right, so everything is in here. We are not going to do much over here. We just want to see how we implement things. Then we just create, um, let's see, this is a website. Yeah, okay, let's see, geo, geo projects. All right. Then for the template inheritance, this is what you are going to do. You are going to do, um, we are going to add a block content over here. So we are going to do block content. Then after which we are going to end block. So we are doing end block. All right, so this is it. And we want, to, uh, we want this index to extend from this. Okay, so whatever space we are leaving over here, whatever thing we write in index is going to be fixed in here. All right, so in order to do that, we need to tell Django that extend. So we put in a template tag and we do extends. And inside extends, there's a partial subfolder and it extends from base.html. All right, so this is the first line of code. Then the next thing we will do is to creating a block. So these are block, block content. Then we are going to end block over here. And block. All right. So whichever thing we type in here will be fixed in this particular block content. So I'll quickly type in some few things. Let's say, um, and each one where you have, um, this is templates page. All right. So if you should go back into the browser, okay, we need to tell, um, before you go into the browser, I need to tell our views that we don't want to render this again, but I want to take something from the template. So what we can do with that, with the index page is to do a render. And this render is being imported over it, actually given to us. Then inside the render, we'll pass in our request. Then after the request, we need to tell Django the name of the template. So the name of the template is index.html. And that's what we're going to do for now, index.html. So when we do this, and we go back into our page, Okay, this is our map. When we do this, we are still going to see this is our map, but then when we do go to the root folder, we are seeing this is what's the template page. Okay, and we've done template inheritance. As a matter of fact, this is the H1 tag. You can see it looks a little bit bigger than what was being rendered at the beginning. But our map page is still using the HTTP response, which we are going to change very soon. So in order to also um, <clears throat> confirm some of these things, we can also do this. Uh, I'm special for this. All right. We can also, um, let's say, inside here, put in a bootstrap class of, let's say, txt danger. So as, to also check if bootstrap is actually working. Okay. So txt danger is actually going to change this to the danger color, which is red. So we can go back and when we refresh, um, fresh, we are going to see that this is red. So now we are confident that everything is working. Now, what I'm going to do now is um, to start things up a little bit here. So, what I want to do is I want to add um, a nav bar over here. So, the nav bar, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Bootstrap and grab one of their nav bars over there. I know today I'm going very fast, so please forgive me. So, we can go to this one where I want this to go. Let's just go to examples. Like I showed you the last time, you just go here and do control U. So control U, we are actually going to see the markup of the HTML. You're just going to grab from this nav to the last point over here. So do control C and come back into our base. Okay. And we put it in here, control V. When we save, 
and you go back into our project. When you see, we'll go back into our project. This is a new project. When we refresh, we are going to see a number over here. Now you can see that uh, each one is actually hidden under it. Okay, if you don't want that to happen, so what we are going to do is we are actually going to put in some padding over here. So this is our index. We can put some padding over here. Okay, on top of it. We can do margin top five, and we can do padding top five as well. So when we save this and we come back, and we come back to refresh, we see that it has come down. This is how we want it to appear. And if you should go into a map, a map is still going to be this because we haven't linked things up. All right. So. <coughs> Um, uh, the first session is going to end very soon, so um, let me just wrap things up, okay, so that I don't move on to something that is going to interrupt later. So basically what we've done is just have a recap of all the things we've done, okay. We've created uh, a Django application we call to special projects. Then in the application, we have a project, um, an app called Sitemap. Then we have this template folder, which we've linked up. Um, you saw me do it over here. So the with this particular line of code. So you have os.path.join. We want to join a base directory to a template folder so that whatever thing in there can be accessed. This is the same thing we did when we had the judging files and things like that. Okay. Then the other thing we also did was to register our app. With this line of code. This is the only thing we did with settings.py. If we were to add some, that's where we are going to come here, specify the engine and the rest of the things that we want to do. But we are not going to do that for today. All right. Then we came to inside our project folder, we came to urls.py and we came to specify that yes, we've created an app and we want us to handle the routing for us. Okay. So we brought this over here. This is the only line of code we added and we brought in the include function. After that, we went ahead to create our, um, how did you call them? Our view, okay. So this is our view. We created a view. Um, this is basically the first thing that we did and we later changed it. Right. Um, in the next session, we are going to recreate the map um, templates then see some of the things we can do over here and after which we are going to implement the logic behind bringing in the map and things like that. So the video is going to end now and we'll reconnect again to proceed. But before then, any questions? Bintu, do you have any question? No, please. Okay, Dorothy, any question? No, please. Okay, Gamo, any question? Everything is fine. Please, I didn't hear you. I said it's it's okay. It's okay. Okay, Nase, any question? Okay. Um, you any question? All right, so the video is going to end about now and we'll reconnect again to complete this entire thing.